Let's be honest, one of the reasons you sew is because you love how it feels when somebody says, Oh my god, you made that? So today we are talking about how to add just that little extra something to some of your projects that will make them that much more impressive and we're gonna do it the easiest way possible. We are talking the most amount of panache with the least amount of effort. Now not only is lace insertion a great way to sort of level up some really basic things that you might make, but let's be honest, hands up in the comments if you have something like this kicking around. Yeah. Because let's, let's be real, especially when it's inexpensive lace, who buys exactly what they need? No, no, we're all standing at the cutting table being like, well, the pattern says I need three meters, so better give me four, just in case. Actually, you know what? Make it five. I mean, I'll probably use it for something else. You know what? I might even make two of these. You know what? Do six. Yeah. No, I'm good. Do six. <laughs> this is funny because I actually like did a de-stash a few months ago and got rid of two more of these. <laughs> So this is also a great way to de-stash some of those piles of lace that you may or may not have lying around. So when it comes to lace insertion, there are tons of ways to do it. There are tons of really delicate hand sewing methods, transition stitches that you can use. That's not what we are about today. Today we are about super easy. We are about using probably only one stitch, um, basic sewing machine technique, no fancy feet, probably. Maybe I might use a zipper foot if I really need a thin, like close to the edge stitch. Um, but we're gonna just keep it dead simple today. Now, often when we think of insertion lace, we think of lace that has a straight edge on both sides. But I'm here to tell you, you can absolutely use scalloped lace. It doesn't matter. Just use the lace you have. Use the lace you love. It's all good. So we're gonna do two quick samples today. Uh, one that is just like the easiest of the easy and another which is almost as easy but um, we're working with like an extra piece. Uh, we're also gonna talk about how to gang up lace. If you do have one of these bags but they're all really thin lace and you kind of like something thick, uh, we're gonna talk about how you can gang lace up and make it into something new. That's all I have to say. So I'm gonna switch my camera. We're gonna get into it. All right, so I have a little piece of broadcloth here that I'm gonna do this sample on. And I'm lining it up with the, um, on the line of my cutting mat so that I can take my ribbon and I can sort of see the lines through my fabric. So I'm just gonna use that to line this. It is a sheer ribbon that has a pico elastic trim on either side. So hey, I'm counting it as a lace. And I'm just gonna pin it all the way down the center of this fabric. Now I'm going to go and I'm going to stitch along this top edge right next to the picots and then I will do the same thing on the other side. And I'm just going to sew this straight onto the fabric. I'm doing my best to keep my needle right on the edge of those picots. So here you can see I have this lace ribbon all sewn on and I'm just going to flip it so the wrong side is up and I'm going to put the end of my scissors in between the fabric and the ribbon. And I'm just going to snip my way all the way, trying to stay as much in the center as I can. Um, because this is ribbon, it's maybe a little bit easier because my the point of my scissors isn't wanting to get tangled in it. You can get scissors specifically for cutting for lace insertion, um, but uh, I don't have any of those. They seem really expensive for something that I'm hardly ever going to use. So I'm just really careful. So now that I have that cut, I'm going to press that cut open. And these are going to become sort of seam allowances. Now, if this is something that is not going to be launder a whole lot or if your fabric doesn't fray a whole lot probably all you're going to need to do is press it in the direction that you need it and stitch it down if you have a fabric that's going to fray a whole lot then you might want to go back and roll that under one more time all right once those are both pressed open i am going to press again from the top and just make sure that everything is nice and flat and all my picots are laying nice and flat and you can see the print of my ironing board just peeking through there. Oh, so cute. All right, for this one, I am going to actually put on um, my zipper foot because I really want to stitch really close to that pico edging. And you'll see I have my awl here 
I'm being really persnickety about this. I know I said I was gonna be doing it dead simple and, and really this is, but I would just prefer not to stitch those picots down. You totally can if you want to, but I'm just using my awl um, to run right next to my picots and it's just lifting them up and out of the way. All right, I'll show you the finished product with that in a minute, but first let's take a look at this lace. I have two kinds of lace here. One is an insertion lace um, that you can um, actually insert a ribbon into. And I thought it would be really pretty to have the insertion lace kind of running down the middle and then the scalloped lace on either side. You can use one of these glue sticks to stick this together if you really want to. Um, I find with lace using the glue stick, it is a sewing glue stick and the glue will wash out right away. Um, but I just find it kind of mucky and, and messy, but it really will hold everything together nicely. I myself just prefer to place it into the machine and place it as I stitch. You just wanna be really careful when you're doing this that you're not accidentally sort of pulling on one piece of lace more than another. What you'll find is that different weaves of lace, even if they're not stretch lace, some will have a little bit more stretch than others. And if you have one piece that's stretching and another piece that's not, you'll kind of end up with either a bit of a ruffle on one or it'll start to curve off in one direction or another. So just be careful that you're um, not stretching them as you're putting them through. All right, so I have one side on and now I'm gonna put the other side on. But because this is scalloped edged lace, I do wanna be kind of careful of where I'm making my scallops line up. Um, I don't kind of want to have the peak of one scallop on one side and then sort of a valley on the other side. So I'm gonna line this up so that my peaks are even on either side of my center insertion lace. All right, there is my finished lace piece. Now, this one, um, instead of placing it on a piece of fabric and cutting the um, excess away like we did last time, which you totally could do, but as you get into wider lace, that actually can be quite wasteful with your good fabric. So I have just cut my good fabric into two pieces and I'm going to put the lace on in, in, in two separate seams. The nice thing about doing this is you can actually finish your raw edges of your good fabric first and then once you get your lace on you're kind of done. I'm not going to worry about raw edges today because this is just a sample. So what I'm looking for here to kind of keep things even is I'm looking for where on the design of the lace I'm having my um, main fabric line up on. Um, you could also measure it out, but I just find, you know, lace is lace. Like it kind of gives you markers within its pattern. So as long as I keep the same um, marker on the lace at the same spot on my fabric, then everything will look tidy. All right, once I have all of that lace pinned in place, I'm just gonna go and um, use a straight stitch to stitch that on. Now being that this is a scallop lace, I want my thread when I stitch to run completely on the lace. Because if I'm using white thread to match my white lace, if I go off of the scallop at all um, against that red fabric, it's totally gonna show. So just be mindful of where you are sticking your seam line. And because it's there, I gotta pull some ribbon through because I mean, obviously. Now as I'm doing this, I just have this put through a really big darning needle. Um, but honestly, if you are doing a project where you're gonna have to pull a lot of ribbon through insertion lace, do yourself a favor and get a leather stitching needle. Um, they're a flat needle and the end kind of opens like a bobby pin and then there's a little sort of um, catch inside that. So what it does is it allows you to pull the ribbon through completely flat. I keep having to kind of turn and make sure that there's no, um, no folds or, or turns in my ribbon because I'm doing it with the, the darning needle that I am doing it with. It's just, that's what I had. Um, but yeah, leather stitching needles are amazing for this. All right, so let's look at the final product. There is the red one. And I just, I think it just looks great that you can see the table underneath it. It would look fantastic as a table runner. It would look great on a Christmas dress. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it definitely does have that traditional look. Um, but this one, I feel like with the sheer, it's a little bit more contemporary. I mean, definitely with the pink picos, I'm still envisioning like a little girl's dress or something like that. But um, really it shows that 
whether or not you're getting a traditional look is based on what you choose to insert. So I'm actually kind of bummed now that I like did this just as a sample because the holidays are coming and I probably could have, I don't know, maybe I could still add something around it, like a border, like make this the center of something and use it at Christmas. I probably will because it's kind of cute. Heck yeah, I'm doing that. All right, so there you go. I hope that was helpful. I hope that you maybe got some inspiration on how you could level up some projects that you have planned. And yeah, I hope you have fun with that. I will see you next week.